the 9th edition Adeptus Sororitas Codex saw a number of changes to their main units. Some of these got toned down a little bit as they were a bit too powerful overall in the game currently. Others got revamped and revised, giving more abilities, more utility, and really fine-tuning their role. And others still regained old abilities that they had in previous editions, once again making them be able to fulfill the role that they were originally designed for. Overall, I think these changes are great, and I'm really excited to go over the top 10 of them. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we'll talk about top 10 units as far as how much they were changed and how much of an impact it has on the game. This doesn't mean that they were good or bad changes, though we will discuss that. It really is ranking them from the least change to the most change. Let's take a look. Alright, first off we have the Dominions, which are intended to be the forward-ranging uh, sort of scout offensive units of the Sisters of Battle. And uh, often their role has been to get stuck in very early, pop tanks from out of interesting different positions uh, in the early parts of the game. And in the release of the 8th edition codex, they actually have not been able to perform this role particularly well, in part due to the fact that they could not pre-game move uh, their transport along with the actual unit. Let me tell you, the only change to this unit that you need to know about is the fact that they have regained this ability, which makes them much more appealing. You can be pre-game moving a Rhino or an Immolator, popping out those Meltas, and actually doing a lot of damage early game. This makes them much more interesting to play for 9th edition, and it's an exciting change that hopefully means that we'll be seeing this unit once again on the table. Next up on our list we have the Zephyrim, which are the jump pack melee version of the Seraphim, of course. Uh, in the past they have, they have fulfilled a similar role to Repentia, but providing a somewhat more reliable delivery choice when not actually having to use command points with their longer move, with their ability to fly, and hitting extremely, extremely hard with their ability to reroll all failed wounds in melee, thus taking their strength 4 to actually uh, really high levels of damage output against most targets. Sadly, these actually took a big hit, losing their ability to reroll wounds in melee. They just don't do, do what they did before. Now they have gained a unit-specific stratagem, this is plus one to wound, uh, but between costing two command points and uh, just not having this baked in natively, it's a pretty big hit to them overall. One interesting change is the pennant, which is the banner that used to grant a rerollable charge for the unit, now grants a rerollable bubble of charge for core units within six inches making them more of a utility role for helping deliver other units, which I find very, very interesting. The Dialogus is an excellent model that almost never saw play in the 8th edition battlefield. We see some exciting changes to this unit that, uh, while keeping her cheap, makes her extremely, extremely interesting on the battlefield. What she does now is she, can, she has the ability to modify Miracle Dice by a plus one or a minus one. This ability previously only existed on the Triumph of St. Catherine, and so being able to take a really cheap, small support character to actually modify these dice is something that I'm really interested to see how it pans out as this book develops. Celestine, a stalwart centerpiece of many Sisters of Battle armies, including my own. She formerly had the ability to grant an additional plus one invulnerable save without using the Indomitable Leaf Warlord trait, which meant you could stack the two, getting four pluses on uh, all of your regular troops and basically providing two bubbles to get those four ups on any of your Seraphim or Zephyrim. Sadly, however, she has lost the, her own personal ability to do this. She now uh, simply has the Indomitable Belief Warlord trait built in, which means, of course, she can still take it, but this means that uh, she's competing with slots such as just cheaper Canonesses, uh, the Imidifier with the Book of St. Lucius, and so this is a really big hit for her, in my opinion. In addition, going up to 200 points, she's now more expensive because the two Gemini are included as part of her squad. 
Uh, now I understand why they made this change. Um, I almost never use the Gemini, and competitively the only reason you would take them was for extremely cheap, fast, small screen units, which isn't really the intent of uh, her bodyguards. Including them in the unit I think is a good call, but uh, at the cost of this really high price hike, and um, also changing the way that they actually get returned to the units. I, I really think this is a miss here. You actually have to have her sit and not move for a turn as she prays, and uh, this lets her heal and then res. Now, uh, this means that you can't move during the movement phase, but the action does complete at the, movement, at the uh, movement phase, which means that, yes, you can shoot, you can charge, things like that, but uh, it feels a little awkward to play, and I really don't think we're gonna be seeing St. Celestine as often on the battlefield. One of my favorite units of all time, and in particular in this codex, is the Triumph of St. Catherine. This gorgeous centerpiece model has always fulfilled an interesting role for me, centering the, the entire army around the, her ability to generate extra miracles, uh, whether or not you actually had a simulacrum in a unit, as well as modifying them and providing fantastic buffs. I do think that this took a significant hit as she no longer grants extra miracles. She maintains the ability to modify dice up or down, but again, as we mentioned earlier, the Dialogus actually fulfills this exact same role. And so, when we take away her most powerful ability, I'm not sure we're going to be seeing her as often. She wasn't necessarily making it into the Top Sisters list, uh, but I felt like I could take her without severely hurting myself, and I'm not sure if this is the case anymore. Right, moving into the top half of the changes, keep in mind that the ranking here is not who had the best changes, who had the worst changes, but who had the most significant changes and, and how does it affect the way that you play this unit. Keeping that in, that in mind, let's take a look at the Imidifier, who was a centerpiece of many, many sisters' armies, of course, having the ability to give plus one strength, uh, and in many cases, more importantly, giving the ability to ignore minus one rend or ignore minus two rend if you're playing Valorous Heart. Now, this has seen a number of changes. I'll tell you what they do. Now, her three tails are Tale of the Faithful. Uh, this one now allows reroll advances and charges within six inches. Very interesting. And of course, now we're already seeing a replacement for those Zephyrim, perhaps taking away even more of the utility that, that they had before. Uh, we have Tale of the Stoic. This used to be the dreaded one, where it grants you immunity to minus one or minus two rend if you're Valor's Heart. This took a big, big hit. I think it's sitting in the timeout box, personally. Um, it is now a six, inch, six inch bubble of minus one to be wounded when you're attacked with strength three or less. I'm not sure really what they were thinking with this one. Um, obviously, it'll protect you against other sisters unless they have Tale of the Warrior, um, but it just it's really, really punishing these small, low strength weapons that aren't even that common in the game now, and uh, I just don't see myself ever taking this ability anyways. So, uh, really, really strange and, and uh, over the top kind of hit to that ability there. Uh, the last one is Tale of the Warrior. This one thankfully has remained the same. It is still the plus one strength. So big changes, changes to this unit. Um, I do see myself still trying to take two of these tails, but now it's going to be reroll advances and charges and plus one strength. Uh, of course, this does combine with some of the changes to Valorous Heart uh, because of the fact that now they just innately ignore minus one and minus two uh, not fully, but just giving a minus one to the AP. So if they have a minus one weapon going into uh, them, they will have a zero AP. And if you have a minus two uh, weapon going into them, it's going to just be reduced to minus one. So they don't really need this image of fire, and everyone else is uh, going to be taking it for different reasons now. This next unit is so vastly changed that we'll probably do a separate video just about them. And so I'm going to categorize them very shortly and in one kind of group. We're talking here about the priests and the missionaries. Um, always something that you would see in sisters' lists as they have the ability to give plus one attack in a six inch bubble. This would often be combined with the Repentia, taking them to three or sometimes four attacks, uh, which is really, really powerful. The way they work now is they have finally gained the ability to perform prayers, just like many other units, such as chaplains. Uh, and uh, this is really, really interesting. A lot of cool abilities here. We have, of course, the uh, rerolls that we kept. They have the ability to grant plus one involts. We're getting a bit of a save back there from Celestine. Again, this is a really cheap model that, in many cases, does the same role that she used to perform. And uh, in addition, we still have the plus one attack. 
And uh, I think uh, this is a great change and we're going to see a lot of interesting and cool things coming out of this new ability and new changes to this unit. With the release of the Palatine, there were lots of questions for many people as to what the role of Junith would be. She formerly was interesting because she was one of the only ways to get rerolls to wound. She was effectively a captain and a lieutenant uh, for her given order. And of course now the Palatine is literally a lieutenant, so what becomes her role? She has a huge improvement in my opinion uh, in this book. She's very well priced. Uh, she just gives rerolls once to hit now, so she's just a captain. Uh, but she also is a chapter master, so she can pick one unit, give them four reels to hit, which is awesome. So, so far so good. She's just a uh, chapter master um, canonist, which is awesome and not easy to find. And lastly, she has an, a fantastic new ability in which she grants light cover to core units within six inches. I think we're going to be seeing her in every single one of these types of lists and uh, really excited to see her on the tabletop in a new and unique role. Now, the Retributors were one of the most infamous units on the tabletop, having a number of really scary abilities and benefiting greatly from the changes to Melta. Unfortunately, this is one of the few uni units that did really and well and truly take a hit in the new book. Uh, they lost a number of things. They lost the ability to ignore the move and shoot penalty for heavy weapons. This means if you are moving with, with your Retributors, which obviously you were because you were coming from outflank or you were coming out of a transport, uh, or even just walking out of cover if you had the luxury of not having to be in a transport, uh, you're going to be hitting on fours. So a big loss in efficiency there. Uh, they did gain a new ability. It is just uh, the fact that they ignore cover now, uh, which is cool and uh, gives them a bit of lethality on top. But it doesn't make up for the fact that they also lost the stratagem that extended their range to 36 inches and gave them an additional damage. Now, I think well, the way we can look at this is uh, this strat existed with the old Melta rule and it sort of took them above normal Melta abilities. Uh, but now with the fact that all Melta gets plus two damage when they were than half range, uh, the extra damage ability from the strat uh, maybe didn't seem as necessary. Uh, and the range, it's a huge, huge hit because these guys, their, their superpower is being able to be so flexible to reach you uh, farther than any other Melta in the game and uh, really just be extremely scary. So this is a big hit to a core unit. I'm curious to see how this one plays out or if there are any combinations further in the book to help improve them or make up for these new deficiencies. Now, while the Retributors were the number nine slot for how vastly they got hit in the new book, uh, luckily we're going to be ending on a happy note with a huge glow up from the Repentia Superior. Now, we rarely saw her on the tabletop before. She gave reroll ones to Repentia, which of course is uh, one of the all-star units in the Codex, was before, still is now. And uh, while it was an inter interesting and powerful ability, she was pretty cheap, she just could not keep up with the unit that she was supporting. Now, one thing I want to say about the book overall that has changed is there is, no, there is no more advance and charge stratagem. This was core to the way that the army played before, with the ability to launch Repentia and Zephyrum deep into enemy territory from outside of a transport. The way it works now is we have uh, the Repentia Superior that can essentially whip the Repentia ladies working up into a frenzy, and in the command phase, granting them the ability to advance and charge uh, to both that unit and herself. Uh, so that's really, really interesting. They regain this ability to advance and charge. The sad fact is, of course, this does happen during the command phase, which means you're no longer going to be, be able to do this from outside of a transport. You're going to have to take those risks and find ways of actually being outside in the command phase in order to maximize this ability. However, in addition, after she whips them, she also grants them an extra D6 on the charge. So they're much, much more effective, much more reliable. Um, often before you were using Miracle Dice to guarantee their charge, but now you have a bit of more flexibility in there. And additionally, while she remains within six inches of the unit, she also grants them plus one to wound. So this is a really big deal because of the fact that the plus one to wound uh, strat now only is a, first of all, it is not bloody, bloody rose locked, and now it only works on Zephyrim. And so this is the only place to get that plus one to wound, um, but being able to have this on a really cheap throwaway unit that can, in theory, keep up with the Repentia is a big deal. 
So I'm really curious to see how this unit pans out. It's absolutely the biggest change, the biggest glow up, uh, certainly compared to what she was before. And we'll see if her newfound abilities are enough to help the Repentia with the fact that they've lost Advance and Charge with a Stratagem. So that is the top 10 biggest changed units in the 9th edition Adeptus Sororitas Codex. Now, there are a couple honorable mentions, I think. There's things like the Hospitalier, Hospitalier however you pronounce it, uh, that uh, actually is interesting now because she gives a feeling of pain to units within three inches. Uh, she also has a stratagem to return D3 models to a unit. So I think she could be interesting, um, but we'll have to see certain units, uh, such as the Plague Surgeon, ended up not making the cut in most Death Guard lists. And I don't know if she'll be in a similar role or a diff in a diff different role. Um, and uh, there's a number of other tweaks, small tweaks to other units that uh, we'll be definitely seeing as the game progresses forwards. Overall, as I mentioned, I think these changes are good. Some of them do hurt a lot, but let's be honest, things like Repentia, things like Dip, uh, things like Retributors had to probably get toned down a bit. Um, and it remains to seen, as I mentioned, with the Repentia, if they're actually going to be toned down, I think ignoring line of sight shooting is a lot less prevalent, but we do have things that can move quite quickly and get around to be able to shoot Repentia while they're staging outside of their transports now. So I think there's so many factors we have to be considering. Um, it's so early in the game, but really excited to see how it pans out. As always, if you found this video to be useful and or interesting, do like and subscribe as it does help us to continue to create this content for everyone. And if you want to support the channel even further, you can hit the join button down below, become a mem member today, get access to uh, the members only section of our Discord where you can actually vote on our members only games each and every Tuesday. Of course, we're going to be playing the brand new Sisters of Battle this upcoming Tuesday. So you can become a member today, get your vote on what we're actually going to be playing with that. Uh, really excited to be playing with this new book. This is an army that I really love playing in the past. I was a little nervous to see the changes to it, but I think, think it's exciting. Um, sometimes change is just, just fun to play, right? It's a new, new season, it's a new game, it's new everything. So let's go ahead and check it out. I'll catch you all next time on the Tabletop.